All right, we're going to do number 35. 35 says a 75 kilogram skydiver. Okay, 75 kilogram is the mass. Can be modeled as a rectangular box which dimensions 20 by 40 by 180. So you can think of them as being a box, rectangular box. This is the approximation here. of 20 centimeters by 40 centimeters by 180 centimeters. And we want to know what is his terminal speed if he falls feet first? Use 0 0.8 for the drag coefficient. So C is equal to 0 0.8. And we are given in the textbook, you have to read the textbook sometimes to see what the values are, but what they give you for the Air density rho is equal to 1.2, so it's uh, kilograms per cubic meter. C does not have any units, by the way. And so all we have to do is plug this into our terminal velocity equation. But first we have to figure out his area. And they say feet first. So if he's falling feet first, then the velocity is this way. Then all I need is a rectangular section like this, and the rectangle is just 20 times 40. Or I'd say the area is, now we've got to do it in meters, so this becomes 0.2 times 0.4, or 0 0.08 square meters. And so when we plug that into our terminal velocity equation, we get that this is equal to the square root of 2 times 75, times 9.8 divided by C, which they tell us is 0 0.8, times rho, which is 1.2, times the area 0 0.08. And we get that the terminal velocity is equal to 138 meters per second. So let's put that in perspective here. So 138 meters per second, I want to convert that to miles per hour. Well, I have down here for seconds, I should say, is I have 3,600 seconds in one hour. Okay, and then I have meters. I want to convert that to kilometers, so I have 1,000 meters is in one kilometer. And then to get to miles, it's 1.6 kilometers per mile. So what happens is the seconds cancel, the meters cancel, the kilometers, and I'm left with miles per hour. So I multiply by 3,600, and I divide by 1,000 times 1 1.6. When I do that, I get that the speed is 311 miles per hour. So you can go very, very fast if you're going feet first or head first. Let's compare that to the speed if he decided to go this way. So his velocity this way, essentially he's falling like this, face down, so he's going that direction. Then the area changes, because the area is now this rectangle. So it's going to be 0.4 times 1.8, or you get an area of 0.72 square meters. And when you plug that into your terminal velocity, everything else stays the same except the area, so this is 0 0.8, 1.2, this becomes 0 0.72. When you plug that in, you get a value of 46.1 meters per second. Or when you do the converting, you get 104 miles per hour. So there's a huge difference between how you fall as far as your speed. And as you increase this area, you get this slower. So that's the whole idea behind a parachute, is you increase the area. Once you get the area far enough, you can get this down to maybe five, 10 miles per hour. Then your body can easily absorb that as you hit the ground, okay? Nowadays, they don't even do it that way. That was the old parachutes where they had the big round ones. You just rode it down, you had no control. Um, now they make the parachutes actually like wings of airplanes that they can control with handles 
And so they can come down and they just, like a wing, they just float up and they can just walk away from it. They're almost landing with zero vertical speed. So things have uh, evolved a lot in skydiving. But that was how you do number 35.